This is sipping and dipping, right? This is sipping and dipping. <laughs> All right, here we go. Listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. You're in for a treat today, ladies. It is the second round of Bree's Radio Theater. And if you joined us for the last episode, it was hilarious. Mm. Today will not disappoint either. It's going to be fantastic because we're still in the season of Lent. And we're doing radio theater on soup suppers. So you can only imagine the kind of vignettes that we are going to hear in the next however long this episode takes. So, Brie, take it away. Okay, so if you are any of our podcast day ones, you would know that one of my first episodes was an ode to the midweek soup supper. So, like, I got, you know, as sort of the Lutheran culture editor quote unquote like that that was that's my subject matter that i'm an expert on i just i went for it right away i i thought about it later and i was like man maybe i shouldn't have uh shouldn't have just like booked it right out the gate maybe i should have waited a few weeks or months before but you know what it, it, it wasn't worked. even lent and it wasn't even Advent. No, it like, wasn't. You just love the soup supper so much all the time that it was Correct. like an ordinary time kind of yeah. thing for you. <laughs> all times are a good time for a midweek soup supper. Are you kidding me? Amen. Like what? Exactly. Exactly. But joking aside, the soup supper, I feel like even though we learned later that it wasn't necessarily like ubiquitous to the Lutheran community where, you know, not. Not every Lutheran church, not every Lutheran has had sort of the soup supper experience. I thought that that was a little odd and also sad, but also like, I guess I shouldn't be surprised at these things. <laughs> hey, um, we had we had tacos for soup supper at my church last <gasps> night, and I thought awesome. that was a wonderful, wonderful take on soup supper. Yeah. You're doing midweek suppers? Yeah, with like restaurant rules, masks until, unless you're sitting oh. at your own table. See, different parts of the country, different, different parts of the country, yeah. different churches doing different yep. things. And that wasn't like yep. a judgy comment, but like I'm like <laughs> jealous. Oh, jealous no, comment. I'm, I'm so happy. Yeah, the same. The rules right that apply to you. restaurants where we wear masks in the whole building, except when we're sitting mm -hmm. at a table with our own family unit eating and drinking. And then when my teenage son goes up for seconds and thirds, then he puts his mask back on. You know, and there's lots of hygiene and single serving options and, you know, things like that. It's That's it's cool. done responsibly. Um, sure. So. I'm so I'm so jealous of that. I'm so okay, just can be. Uh, it's one of the things that that I have personally missed dearly. And I think that that's because it's at least in my experience in LCMS Lutheranism is that was that was a key way for me growing up. And even now as an adult, it was, it was a key way for me to exist in the community. And that's how we sort of built and cultivated our little church culture is by being able to sure. gather at least for a few months on end and, you know, in the middle of the week to break bread together. And so, yeah, that has definitely been one of the things I really miss about just church community life in general is being able to do that during Advent and Lent seasons. I just loved all the food. I was mm. a shy kid, though. I didn't talk to anyone. I just ate the food. Mm. <laughs> but you felt like you were part of something, even so. Like, even if you That's don't talk right. to anybody, you're eating the same stuff that yep. others That's are right. eating. Yep. Yeah. No, it's, it's wonderful. Absolutely. So what I did for you today, and man... Like I have to commit to this now. Like the first radio <laughs> theater was su was such a beacon of comedic excellence that <laughs> it's going to happen again, and I have to what? bring it every time. What? Like, yes, you do. It's like it's like the one like the first radio theater. It was like the One Ring. Like I wish it had never come to me. Sometimes <laughs> it's like you got to go. You are all in. You got to do it. 
All the way to Mount Doom. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, so for those of you who are not familiar with the radio theater concept, or the Lord um, of the Rings, or the, or the Lord of the Rings, um, the Book the Club. Breeze Radio Theater is basically a series of short vignettes. The first time that I did these, it was like thirty to sixty seconds. This time, it's I think some of the longer ones are a minute twenty. They're not very long. They try to capture some of the quirkiness of Lutheran culture. In this case, the midweek soup supper. This is all very tongue in cheek. So like if you hear something where you're like, uh, what? Like it is all meant in good fun and authentic Christian love. And don't <laughs> at me because... This is my own this is my own personal observations. <laughs> Can't be mad you know, at me for, for that. If there's one thing we seem to have lost a lot of in our country in the last several years, it's an appreciation for good comedy. So I mm-hmm. want to thank you for helping remind us that good comedy is good and let's celebrate it. Cheers to that. Yes. So speaking of offensive, this first clip. <laughs> Off with the bag. Here we go. I'm just gonna throw it out there. So this first clip is called Benediction and Closing with Pastor and Trent, the overly eager, accidentally irreverent, bordering on heretical praise band leader. So <laughs> just to preface this, okay. In the worship wars, and I have that I have that term trademarked, by the way. It's like a brand. <laughs> I am as Switzerland as possible when it comes to the worship wars. I think that in my own personal experience, there are pros and cons to each style, whether you're more of like a high church, very liturgical, or, you know, the other end of the spectrum. I do what I can to appreciate a variety of the different worship styles. And, you know, as long as we can worship from a solid biblical foundation, like, I'm all for it. I'm willing to try it out. However. It is obvious that some worship styles detract uh, from the divine service, but frankly, I've heard original compositions with lyrics that wouldn't pass doctrinal review, even with suggestions. (laughs) For those of you who are uninitiated, (laughs) doctrinal review is a process by which all uh, official (laughs) synod publications and Concordia Publishing House books and such have to go through where somebody, and I've been through doctrinal review many Mm. times somebody anonymous to you but who knows what they're doing will look at your piece and will highlight problems from a doctrinal perspective that you have to fix in order to be published sometimes though you can outright fail yes uh, which is this piece (laughs) is so irredeemable it should never see the light of day (laughs) yeah and i think that is what you're talking about here absolutely (laughs) so and doctrinal review is a good thing it is. Yeah, you know, we obviously want to be legit and authentic and not mislead people. So that's not really my critique here. But what I will say is I have created an alter ego. His name is Trent. <laughs> he, is the, he is this irreverent, borderline heretical worship leader who is just so eager to serve the Lord that sometimes his eagerness sort of crosses a line into impropriety which is me a lot of the time. So I filter my cheeky doctrinal commentary through Trent who can get away with the things I can't say because he isn't real. Here is scene one. Again, this is benediction and closing with pastor and Trent, the overly eager, accidentally irreverent, bordering on heretical praise band leader. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Quick announcement for those of you who are joining us for Holy Week worship next week. See your bulletin or visit our website for service dates and times. And I pray I'll see you on Maundy Thursday for our Living Last Supper performance. It's a popular hit with the community. To play us out tonight, our praise band leader Trent has an original composition he'd like to share with you all. Thanks, my dude. Maundy Thursday is such a special day, and 
I just thank my God we have the Christian freedom to partake of his supper however we want. Oh, uh, where is you know, this going? Some Tra people I like the common <sighs> cup, some like their own cup, and some even like to intinct their wafer. And it's all good, man. It's all good. To celebrate that tonight, this song is called Sippin' or Dippin'. Uh, no, or, uh, no. Let's, no, let's just play the first thing you turn to and you're all God's uh, people sing, Trent. You got it, fam. All right, here we go. Earth and all stars, <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> Note to self. <laughs> Do not play that clip out of context because I played it for my husband and he's like, honey, you're going to make a lot of people mad. <laughs> I might anyway, but definitely don't listen to it without context. I just love that. Where are we going with this line from the pastor? Because I have seen that look on my husband's face. A few times in life where it's like, do I do I say something or do I just let it go? And, <laughs> and thank goodness the pastor in this in this case, you know, exercised his responsibilities and uh <laughs> I I have a confession to make. Okay. I conceived of the song Sippin' and Dippin' about five years ago. <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> There's no way I can tell anybody that I'm having this thought about a potential <laughs> communion hymn called Sippin' or Dippin'. <laughs> and now I feel liberated having told you all about it. It served its purpose. Yeah. It brought joy and it did not actually... Like, Get sung. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But see, when you had that thought, you had the good sense to realize maybe I shouldn't go ahead <laughs> and write up this song and put it on YouTube. So, you right. know, it's uh, good for you. That's right. Admirable yeah. restraint. Yeah. Can I just say that I am hopeful that maybe Trent will become a recurring character in radio <laughs> theater and yes. we'll get to visit this this church again oh, no. and I hope so. <laughs> Yes. I'm just going to I'm just going to throw that out there. I think we can make that work. <laughs> I think he's going to need his own swag. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Yeah, he it's does. Guitar picks you with Trent it. on them. You got it, fam. <laughs> T-shirt that says, um, no, Trent. <laughs> Where is this going, Trent? <laughs> oh, Trent. I oh, love man. him. I just love him so much. And I guess we probably should have prefaced this before we started to for those uninitiated when it comes to radio theater. Hopefully you'll appreciate this when after I say this a little more, but these are one woman hits. Like I'm doing all the characters. I did the little guitar strumming at the beginning of Sippin' or Dippin'. I did the little like triangle, like let's like this the symbol and stuff. So it's really it's a masterpiece. It really yeah. is an undertaking in experimental theater. Absolutely. Like Van Dyke with that one man band. That's right. <laughs> You were even the lady who really loves good at Monday Thursday services. I loved her. <laughs> I love that. And I sh we should also say that the other three of us are, for the most part, hearing these for the first time. Yeah. So we have not uh, weighed in at any point in the creative process. And are I might have to cut some of these out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Where are you going with this, Bree? <laughs> <laughs> oh. So this next vignette pokes fun at Lutherans who love frugality, but, you know, sometimes they want to give in to the worldliness of variety. And in this particular instance, this is where it shows on the soup supper menu. Hi. Hello. Welcome to our Lenten meal. Thanks. Not soup, sir. Chicken vegetable, chicken noodle, uh -huh. beef noodle, uh -huh. beef vegetable, mm -hmm. vegetable beef, sure. chicken rice, rice uh -huh. chicken, rice beef, yeah. uh -huh. no bean chili. What? You know how pastor gets at that 7 p.m. I, I don't, but... <laughs> uh, oh, and what? we have some of last week's vegetable beef as well. Uh, What'll it be tonight? Uh, 
Oh, so many options. <laughs> How to pick? Oh, man. I've totally been the lady serving the soup, but I've also <laughs> totally been the one standing in line listening to the options. And usually, what I would say in that circumstance is, "Could I just get a little bit of everything?" I love soup <laughs> so much. Well, I'm gonna say though that that is a downfall in many ways of a soup supper. It's hard to get a little of multiple soups Mm -hmm. like do you end up with six bowls on your plate do you put them in the same bowl that's you just keep coming back over over yeah exactly that's that's usually the approach i take is the i'll just do the repeat visit you know they should really get like for those of us who like a soup sampler like mm-hmm. invest uh-huh. in those like we I usually when I was growing up we had like the styro this like the solo styrofoam bowl. But oh, they yeah. make like these small like cups now, kind of like they have yeah. at like a Panera or a just like a smaller just smaller thing if you wanted to just have a little of everything. Mm-hmm. When we did our chili cook off, uh when I lived in Chicago, that's what we did. We had a plate and then we had like eight of the little tiny bowls and then it was mm. just like a chili sampler. And it I worked out it. really well. And let's face it, Lutheran ladies can cook. So like, mm. even if the soup sounds and looks simple, you're going to want to try that because it's true. It's good. Ham and bean, more like a symphony of tastes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I completely forgot about that soup because when I was writing this, I'm like, okay, what are like the quintessential soups that you have at a soup supper? What do you guys recall from your own experiences that wasn't like tacos or spaghetti (laughs) i'm gonna expand and say not just lutheran ladies can cook lutheran guys can cook too because the the soup that at our church always is gone first is a venison chili it's amazing okay okay Okay. and that is made by a lutheran gentleman a lutheran dude that's Mm -hmm. cool my husband my husband cooks soups and chilies very well I love chili so much, too. Mm. I feel like chili is sort of a quintessential soup supper option. That and broccoli cheese. Yes. Mm. It's the only place I, I don't make it at home, but if because I don't actually want to know how much of the creamy <laughs> flour and butter and it. cream is in it and actual yeah. cheese. I would rather not know that, but that doesn't stop me from eating it and enjoying it very, very right. much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I really love Italian wedding soup, but I can't remember if it was actually at any soup suppers. I just really like that one. Mm. I love that That's one. amazing. It is mm. delicious. So good. All the Yum. little, the, like baby meatballs. Delicious. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> so this next clip is an homage to the DCE intern or maybe just the DCE in general. If you have one at your church, be sure to thank them for their service. Hug them when social distancing efforts are lifted and if they're comfortable with it. <laughs> Most DCEs, in my experience, are huggers. Yeah. Okay. It's good. To is that like not a, all, but in my experience, it's a common. Mm-hmm. Thing. Good to know. Like, but definitely like ask a, first. There's a training course probably as, as associated <laughs> with DCE coursework <laughs> in how to. Hug without being weird. Because they have the gifts. Mm. So this next clip is called Overworked, Underpaid, DCE Intern Dana. And for all you church council members who are listening out there, if your DCE has ever delivered a message like this before at a soup supper, you need to reassess what you're doing. Good evening, everybody. can you hear me? Is this, is this thing on? You can hear? Okay. Hey, okay, great. Um, thank you all for coming out to our Lenten Soup Supper tonight in support of our youth group. As you know, they're raising money to attend the next LCMS Youth Gathering. So the baskets at your table are there to collect free will offerings. You are also welcome to extend your support through the end of the year. We are hosting Chick-fil-A nights on Thursdays. I am in the process of planning our annual trivia night. And again this summer, we will be hosting weekly car washes in the church parking lot. Um, Thank you again for not wanting to cook meals for your families or do your own chores. 
so that our youth can attend the next youth gathering. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I need to see if the copier finished printing all 600 of this weekend's Sunday School materials, fix the air conditioner up in the choir loft, and paint an entire youth room before I go home to dinner. And so, I, what? The, the juice dispenser's broken again? Yeah, yeah. I'll come take a look. <laughs> Are you okay there, Bree? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm just laughing at how much of a genius I am. <laughs> I think you deserve an Oscar for the role of baby at soup supper talking oh, over no, no. Okay. <laughs> Two things. Two technical notes, okay? A do you know how hard it is to imitate a baby squealing? Because let me tell you, like <laughs> I had to dig down deep into my soul for that. <laughs> Second of all, I didn't know how this was going to work. I tried to mimic white noise. And so <laughs> I did about six different tracks on each recording doing this. Like literally for a minute was. <laughs> and, then I'd like, and then I'd like insert laughs in there sometimes. It was like. Ha ha ha. And then, like, I'd clap and stuff, and my husband was like, what is wrong with you? But it was like that. I, I probably spent more time recording these, like, doing, like, the speaking in tongues for a minute at a time with, like, the intermittent laughter more than, like, actual talking in this whole entire experience. It's beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate Creative that. Creative genius. Thanks. It hurts me sometimes, but... <laughs> Yeah. Well, I have a recording that's going to make Aaron quite perturbed. Oh, boy. I can't wait. <laughs> to be clear, Cootie Crunch is the name I made up for a generic match three iPhone game, not some kind of disease or ailment. Not a breakfast cereal? <laughs> not a breakfast cereal. It sounds like a breakfast cereal. <laughs> so this one's called Help. My son is addicted to Cootie Crunch, and I don't have the willpower to reprimand him in public. <laughs> this one's going to max out your gains. Just beware. <laughs> because the rest of this episode hasn't yet. Hey! <laughs> Enough. Billy, I swear you are absolutely addicted to that phone. Why don't you stop playing that cootie crunch or whatever and go talk with your friends? Oh, come on, Mom. I don't Billy. want to. No, Give Mom. Give me the phone, Billy. Stop. Billy. No. Give me no. the phone. Stop. Leave me alone. One. No. Two. Mom, come on. Wait. Oh, my gosh. Stop. Rachel's twitching. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think I'm the one. I'm triggered. Rachel, you're losing your mind. Are you okay? Literally last night, one of my children said, hey, can I sit two pews behind you in church last oh. night? And I was like, sure, that's fine. I mean, you don't have to sit with us every single moment. And then I turned around in the middle of the sermon and somebody is hunched over a phone that they smuggled into church. <gasps> the phone was oh. confiscated. The child was reprimanded. But oh. it's in the middle of the sermon. How much reprimanding can you do? So wow. <laughs> I blame the phones, or in this case, in, in your in your parallel, the cootie crunch. Mm. But yes, I start. I did start physically twitching in the middle. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm so struck a nerve. Honestly, I don't know. I'm wow. gonna say something right now. Like if I was worshiping with you last night. And like <laughs> encountered that, I would be okay with you being like disrupting the entire church service and being like, look at my kid being a dingus right now, everybody. They think that being on their phone is more important than listening to the word of God. But you know what? It gave me an opportunity. Ultimately, after the service, we sat together while the church emptied out and talked about how I showed her in the bullet and I said, from the invocation to the benediction, that's God's time. Mm. You will not see me pick up my phone during that time ever. Amen. I realize I'm as addicted as you are. But during God's time, 
we don't. Now, of course, mm. this vignette was recorded at the soup supper. So, you know, it's a little different. <laughs> but Although, you got to turn off that cootie crunch and socialize, you Billy. You got to. That's right. What are you doing? That's right. Yeah. It's so easy, though. And you got to be a little more respectful to your mom. Yeah. Billy. yeah. <laughs> so we're going to wrap this up with a little lesson in humility. Lutherans, as we've established, are excellent cooks. Whether you're a Lutheran lady or a Lutheran dude, we have the gift of culinary skill, I feel like. And I think that's why we couch so many of our outreach and community building events in food. Whether Mm -hmm. it's an ice cream social or a soup supper or, okay, fried chicken dinners. Did you guys do those? Or like a sausage supper? Do you pancake breakfast? Yes. Sausage sure. supper. Like mm, the list so like the good. list is endless. Like I was sitting and thinking about this. Like, wow. Rally day so spaghetti much. dinner. Yes. Yeah. Love Chicken it. fry. Yeah. Love All the it. food. Here's what I'm gonna ask is if you haven't been to a potluck, A, what are you even doing with your life? And B, get to one. <laughs> one social distancing is not a thing anymore. And you have the opportunity. You should definitely do one. And if your church doesn't have them, they're the easiest thing in the world to organize. Just say potluck this day, A through K bring main dish, et cetera. On, you know, it, mm-hmm. Really, they plan themselves. Yeah, they do. You know, a few years ago, our church didn't have, we, we would do the occasional potluck, but we decided to start doing mm. monthly potluck on the, I think it was the first Sunday mm. of the month was always potluck Mm -hmm. Sunday. So it was a consistent one and it was, everyone knew it. And it took just a little bit, just a couple of months before it was a thing. And it was beautiful fellowship. So yeah, if your church doesn't already have a ongoing habit of that, again, once, you know, we haven't had a potluck for a long time now. Yeah. It'll be nice when we don't have to make all these caveats. <laughs> um, <laughs> no but if your church doesn't have that as already part of the tradition, that that turned out to be a really easy thing to add in. For those of you who have been to a potluck or a midweek supper of some kind, at least in my experience, there's always been like the dessert table, right? And sometimes oh. there's like a hotly contested item or it's like the hot commodity item and like supplies are limited. So you got to make sure if you want that slice of pie, like you better, you might want to get your dessert before you get your broccoli cheddar soup, man. Like that's, <laughs> you got to be strategic about it. But also I think Lutherans have a reputation for being sacrificial. And my question is, should we be so sacrificial that we deny ourselves that last piece of pie? I mean, would you? I mean, really think about it. Some of us I would wait until there's nobody at the dessert table and then just go grab what I want. <laughs> I would too. How many times can you cut a slice of pie in half? That's <laughs> that is the very Lutheran right? answer. <laughs> right. Like how many and then, times can you then there's a the dessert table where there's some store bought sugar cookies. There's like a cake that was made from a mix, and then there is obviously like a homemade pumpkin pie, pie crust mm. from scratch with the, you know, all butter crust. And <sighs> you're like, I, I want the I want the pie. <laughs> yeah. Let the kids have Listen, sugar cookies. Um, they they can't appreciate I'm here to tell you, the pie. Like some of us would take that slice of pie without restraint. So like just know that. Like and my my encouragement to you all out there in podcast land is be bold. Eat the pie and trust in the grace of God. Hmm. So this last vignette for you all is called Gladys, Annette, and a Slice of Humble Pie. (laughs) Oh, would you look at that? The last slice of Millie Baker's apple pie. Don't mind if I... Oh, oh, Gladys, I'm sorry. I didn't think anyone else would have wanted that. Uh, of course, Annette. I, I just, I didn't see you there. <clears throat> you take it, Gladys. 
Nonsense, Annette. I know you saw it first. It's as good as yours. Oh, no, you don't, Gladys. You know what they say in the Bible about those who humble themselves. Precisely, <laughs> Annette. <laughs> oh, one more slice of Millie Baker's famous apple pie tonight? It must be my lucky day. Let me just sneak in here, ladies. I better go find a fork. Let me oh, let me just let me just, just, there. Me there. Uh, let me just grab that piece of pie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you can give up that last slice of apple pie. Someone's gonna take it. Oh yeah. Oh my Whether goodness. Whether or not you get that recognition is another yeah. matter entirely. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'm just too non-confrontational to like even bother. <laughs> I just uh-huh. walk away. <laughs> I'd be like, a sugar cookie is, is nice, I guess. I'll put it with coffee, it'll be fine. Okay, well, it depends though. Is it the sugar cookie with like the inch of marshmallowy frosting on top? Because you mm, okay, all those. Those I, are good. And I have not figured out how to make those at home. So ugh. yeah. It's like a dust cloud in your mouth. You can have all mine, Rachel. That's for okay. sure. My kids know, will be at the table first and they'll be they'll be gone. <laughs> We always had like a, an extraordinary amount of desserts on our dessert table when I was growing up, though. Like there was there was never a shortage yeah. of something sweet. Most of it was Jello salad. <laughs> there was generally enough to go around. Although See, we didn't that was have Gladys the salad table, pie. though. That was not the dessert. That was the <laughs> salad <true>. table. <laughs> I still don't understand that. <laughs> I don't yeah. question the matters of the heart. Ongoing mystery. <laughs> So there's another Re- Breeze Radio Theater in the books for you, everybody. Hope you, Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. Yes. <laughs> Good. This was uh-huh. a classic. And I do I do hope to meet some of these characters again in you future, got it, fam. future radio theaters. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, ladies, hopefully you all enjoyed this edition of Breeze Radio Theater Soup Supper Edition. Uh, Maybe you've experienced some of these things in your own life. We'd love to hear your stories uh, about them in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge group on Facebook and introducing Newsflash. We are now on Instagram, which is super exciting. We will be putting the podcast episodes there as well as daily life in the lives of Lutheran ladies and things that are appropriate and applicable to our programming so if you are on Instagram make sure you find us at Lutheran Ladies Lounge there's a lot of community on our Facebook group as well if you're on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge group lots of discussion and polls and all kinds of stuff so Join us in either of those places on social media. You can also find all of our podcasts at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge or on your favorite podcasting app. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm going to put Billy's cell phone in a wood chipper. (laughs) And I'm Gladys. Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge. This is dangerous when we record on a weekday afternoon. I know, right? We're we're (laughs) at a different level. Anyway. Can you not hear it? I can now. now. I can before you are muted. Oh, I muted myself. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> There's an out. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Guess it helps if I don't mute my own mic so you can actually hear. Okay, let's try that again. Hold on. Back to the beginning. It's all Hang right. on. Just a second. I'm going to shut my wonderful window that's open to the 70 degree air because oh, there's machinery God. outside. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say machine guns. <laughs> machine guns. You're on an army base. How is that working? That's...
she's at Brie, you are you're over modulating a bit. Not army. Um, I don't know if you want to like either turn your gain down or just like not get so close to your mic. <laughs> what are you talking me? about? Huh? <laughs> How do I adjust the gain? Um, I don't know if you can on that mic or just like not talk quite so close. Just to not me. be around right here. Be more like right here or yes. right here. Not so much here, but here. Because there's a lot of popping I might need to fix. Is this good? This Is this good? <laughs> Am I okay a here? Little, a little more. How about? Or no. I, I can't tell if look at your face. Anyway, window shut. Someone's power washing a deck across the. Uh, across oh god! The, yeah, the most so. satisfying thing you could ever do in your life. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous, but. Here I am. This is actually the second most satisfying thing after power washing. You're is right. Listening, listening to uh, radio theater. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Radio theater. As, as it should be. Did you hear um, that? Yes, I heard that. Get out of here. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm sorry. Was it the yeah. The dog. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh. <laughs> no, wait. Go get the <laughs> 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 I was like, why are you reacting this way to what I'm saying? This is all pretty straightforward. Start a potluck after church on a Sunday. I thought it was your stomach. I thought, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought, wow, yeah, all this talk about potlucks is making me hungry too, but really, come on. <laughs> Can you hear my dog yelling outside right now? <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. M. <laughs> Gary. <He's> so <laughs> sad. <laughs> you were so mad at him. <laughs> it's because his dad's not home and I'm ignoring Aww. him. Oh. That's exactly why this is happening right now, the way that it is. We have so many outtakes in this episode. <clears throat> Any other comments <laughs> before I wrap this up? Um, sorry. <laughs> Um, thank you. You're welcome. 